In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. and welcome to another episode of Bishop Littman Live. I am Bishop A. Reginald Littman and I'm so excited to share this with you. If you are new, please consider subscribing. This is a channel that is all about helping you discover your divine destiny in God, to awaken and to become aware of the greatness and the goodness of God that lives on the inside of you. I want to help you find that place of peace that can only come by knowing who you were created to be. And that's why I do these series of videos. So I hope that you will comment, like, rate, share, subscribe, so that you'll be able to catch every episode as it is loaded. To those of you who may be listening to the podcast, we're excited to welcome you. Please be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Well, today we are continuing in our study of the second chapter of the book of Philippians. And I love this book with all of my heart. It is a letter that was written from the Apostle Paul while he was in jail. Not sure of the outcome of his trial or his sentence. Yet in these four little chapters of this wonderful little book of Philippians, Paul repeatedly uses the word joy. He tells them to rejoice. He tells them to love God, to love one another. And the second chapter of Philippians, Paul helps them, beginning with the fifth verse, to see the necessity of having the right kind of mindset. You see, my mindset and your mindset is one way. But the mind of Christ is an altogether different way. And so in this section, Paul asked them a question in a sort of kind of way. And I want to title this teaching today, Have You Lost Your Mind? Wait, don't touch that channel. I think this is going to bless you. Let's go into the word of God now in second, the second chapter of Philippians, verse number five. The, the Living Bible translation reads like this. Your attitude should be the kind that was shown us by Jesus Christ, who, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And he humbled himself even further going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on a cross. Have you lost your mind? Well, in this particular section of Philippians, Paul is telling the church and vicariously telling you and I as modern day believers that our mindset is the opposite of the mindset we should have. You see, in our mindset, quite like many of the Philippians, they were quite judicious. They were looking for lawsuits. They were looking for a reason to complain, a reason to demand their rights, a reason to object to everything and to insist upon everything that they had coming to them. So they thought Paul helps us to see that is not the mindset that we should have. In fact, we should lose our minds in order to find Christ's mind. And so he says to us in these verses, verse five, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, the King James Version. The Living Bible says your attitude should be the kind that was shown us by Jesus Christ. Now, look at the sixth verse who, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God. That lands us at our first point. Number one, the mind of Christ is not self-absorbed. The mind of Christ is not self-absorbed. Now notice, Paul is in jail. He is a prisoner. He is writing from a jail cell. He is chained up to a soldier eight hours a day for three shifts per day. Yet, instead of demanding to be brought before a judge, demanding a speedy trial and all of that, 
Paul is kind of going with the flow and he is seeing that God is using this opportunity for him to preach the gospel to the Roman soldiers who were receiving the gospel because they couldn't run away. They had to be with him eight hours a day. And so they were consequently going home and re-preaching what Paul preached to them. Their families became Christians. They got saved and they were spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ because they looked at Paul's life and said, there is really no reason this man should be here. He's innocent. He's pure. And he is actually here on trumped up charges simply because he's challenging the government with preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so they believed in him and they believed the word that he was preaching. Consequently, they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were baptized and the soldiers and their families were becoming Christians and becoming preachers of the gospel themselves. So Paul is modeling what it is that he has taken now from the life of Christ that Paul had rights and knew his rights, yet he did not demand every single right that was coming to him. And he follows after the pattern of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not self-absorbed. Even in Paul's preaching, he was not saying, I'm Paul. I was circumcised on the eighth day as a Jew, and I've gone to this school, and I've learned this, and I have these credentials. No, he was not so self-absorbed that he made his whole life about him. Where did he get that from? From the life of Christ, that Jesus was not self-absorbed, that he made it all about him. In fact, when he would work a miracle or heal somebody, quite often he would say to them, don't tell anybody. Was he being sarcastic? Was it sort of oxymoronic? Was he really trying to get them to tell somebody, but he says to them, don't tell anybody? Absolutely not. He knew that the sooner people got word about who he was, the sooner they would be trying to kill him before his time. And so we ought to live a a non-self-absorbed life where life is not all about us. And it's not all about, I demand my rights. Sometimes we ought to take on the mindset of Christ, lose our mind and make it all about God, not about us and not be self-absorbed. What else does Paul teach us in this passage? Well, number two, he teaches us that the mind of Christ is also not self-promoting. It is not self-promoting. Look at verse number seven. Jesus laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. Jesus illustrates for us a non-self-promoting lifestyle. Again, he laid aside his power and his glory, and he took on the disguise as a slave and became like men. You see, Jesus did not promote his Christ side. He did not promote his divine side. In fact, he literally deliberately and intentionally came to this earth, which he made as God. Yet he was born as a babe in a womb that he made. And he deliberately and intentionally laid aside his power and his glory. And he took on a disguise of a slave because he was not self-promoting. He made it all about the cause of God, salvation, the saving of souls that we might be free eternally, fully, completely, and joyfully. Our lives ought to mirror the life of Christ. We ought to lose our mindset of always promoting ourselves, always passing out our business cards, always marketing our ministry, our skills, our thoughts, our mindset, always being a walking billboard always talking about ourselves, but never really promoting God, righteousness, salvation, and eternity. Paul gives us a third point here about what life looks like when we lose our mind. We also will discover that the mind of Christ is not is, is not self-directed. The mind of Christ is not self-directed. Now look at the eighth verse with me. 
and he humbled himself even further, going so far as actually to die a criminal's death on a cross. You see, the mind of Christ, and when we lose our mind and take on the mind of Christ, we will no longer direct our own affairs. When we look at the life of Christ, he humbly, willingly volunteered himself to fulfill the will of God, bringing about the salvation of the entire world for us because he allowed God to be in control of his life, in control of his destiny, and in control of his affairs. When you understand who it is that you serve, who is the true and living God, when you understand that God is so much greater, so much bigger, so much stronger, so much wiser than you are, then you won't try to take matters into your own hands. You won't try to direct your own affairs. You'll lose your mind that I have to be in control of everything. I have to know where everything is. I have to be on top of everything. I have to plan everything. I have to prepare for everything. I have to know every intimate detail of the future, step by step, point by point, letter by letter. It has to all line up before I can get out of the bed in the morning. No, my friend. Having a mind like that will always leave you depressed, stressed, worried, and anxiety. It will always leave you challenged. But when you understand, yes, I have responsibilities that I must take care of and all of that. But I can trust God with my life and I can trust God with my affairs and I can trust God with my future because he sees beyond the corner. I only see up to the corner and that's with corrective lenses. (laughs) We have spiritual cataracts, but our God sees it all and knows it all. And you've got to lose your mindset and not live a self-directed life life. And that's what Paul teaches us in the second chapter in verse number five through eight. So let's quickly summarize. And then I want to pray with you. So in Philippians chapter two, verse five through 11, we see this section here. And Paul teaches us number one, that the mind of Christ is not self-absorbed. That's verse six. Number two, the mind of Christ is not self-promoting. That's verse seven. Finally, the mind of Christ is not self-directed. And that is verse eight. Have you lost your mind? If you haven't, I hope you do. <laughs> Losing your mind will not allow you to end up in an insane asylum. It actually will allow you to end up in perfect peace. But holding on to your mindset No telling where you end up. Let's trust God today. Would you pray with me right now? Father, we thank you so much for the mind of Christ. Thank you for a savior who was willing to give his entirety that we could be free, that we could have an intimate relationship with you. And God, we repent of every time that we have tried to run things and do things our way and only do things according to our own sight, our own mindset. Forgive us for every time that we've leaned to our own understanding and failed to acknowledge you in all of our ways. God, we repent today in dust and ashes, and we ask that you would purify our hearts and our motives, that we would only seek your will, your way, your word. And God, we give you full control of our lives, of our mindsets, of our hearts, of our destiny. Help us to lose our minds that we might find the mind of Christ. And I pray this prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Well, my friends, I'm so glad that you were with me today. I want to encourage you to like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment. I'd love to go back and read it and respond to your comment as soon as I get the opportunity. By all means, if you have a prayer request, I want you to send it to me at prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. And we look forward to praying with you and for you. The Lord bless and keep you is our prayer. 
until next time, this has been Bishop Littman Live. God bless you.